Oh, okay. Oh, why is he doing that? Oh, I am scared. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, I'm Marion, and this is Marion's Test Kitchen, and today I'm going to attempt to make the most numbing, mouth tingling dessert ever. Ooh. Ooh, very, very, very numbing. I feel like this is inviting danger. What could go wrong? So in my experience, that kind of like numbing tingliness, it's a really good thing. Like I love those Szechuan dishes where you've got that hot and numbing combination going on. You're not just eating something with flavor, but you're also getting this additional sensation at the end. Well, actually I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever tried a dessert where you get that numbing, tingling kind of business going on. So I'd really love to take that excitement, the, the numbing excitement and bring that into something sweet. So these are all very classic Szechuan dishes. What's interesting about a lot of these dishes actually is that you have Szechuan peppercorns in multiple ways. So in the standard noodle, the Szechuan peppercorn is in like that porky stir fry. It's infused into the sauce and you can sprinkle it on the top as well. You can feel the intensity. It's an actual sensation, not just a flavor. The interesting thing with the Mapo tofu, this dish is gonna have an added creaminess so another texture on top of the numbingness it's kind of like a little bit similar in texture maybe to like an ice cream i think for me the combo of the chili and the numbingness is something that's really exciting i love that there's like a whole nother dimension like my mouth is literally sort of vibrating and on fire at the same time okay let's do the boiled beef where we've got the szechuan peppercorns in the dish itself and then we've got this crunchy chili and szechuan peppercorn to go on the top i feel like that's going to give us the biggest fresh impact with all these dishes you know you're pairing really spicy things with this really numbing sensation so that's that mala uh, term which comes from China which which talks about the hot and numbing. Is it the heat that accentuates the numbing? Do they work together really well? I mean I think they work together really well but it's just interesting that in the classic use of these Szechuan peppercorns it's all about the hot as well as the numbing. That extra crunch on the on the end it really brings the heat and the numbingness right to the front. So rather than having to chew through and get the heat coming later it's like right there. So I think the thing for me here is like how do I get the Szechuan peppercorn, the numbness, the intense heat. How do I get that into something sweet? You know, a lot of these dishes here, you can see that the heat and the peppercorns are kind of infused into, infused into the oil or infused into the sauce. Do I need a combination of, you know, fresh peppercorn on top as well as in the dish? Multiple layers here with these savory dishes. And I think I'm gonna to need to think about a dessert that has multiple layers also. All right, so I think what I wanna try and do here is have a look at how the Szechuan peppercorns interact with other flavors. Are things gonna be more numb with certain flavors or with certain textures or, you know, all those sorts of things. So I'm gonna be trying out two different types. So I have green Szechuan peppercorns and red Szechuan peppercorns. I'm gonna to toast each of the Szechuan peppercorns, the green and red, and then I'm gonna grind them so that I get a nice powder that I can use for my tasting. I'm gonna start with some of the sweet first of all. So I'm gonna go with the mango. That green peppercorn definitely has a lot more kick than the red, but I'm not sure that the mango really tastes any better with the peppercorns. I'm interested to try this with some salt and the chili. Wow, that salt makes a huge amount of difference. I've had sweet on my palate and now I'm getting salty, numbing and hot, which is what I wanted. Now I'm gonna go in here with the, another fruit. I'm a bit nervous about it though because peppercorns are so citrusy and then I'm gonna try this now with a lemon. I'm a bit worried about the face that I'm gonna be making here when I try this and see. That's really sour. Oh, and then now my whole mouth is going numb. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the peanuts now. Green, salt, some chili. Saltiness and chili straight up. And then I've got that lovely creamy peanut sort of thing going on. But I wonder whether if we made like a peanut butter, I really enhanced that creaminess and that texture. Mm. I think that could be really cool. I think we can get now into, well, now that I am really enjoying this, the spiciness, let's try the chili. I'm gonna go with the green powder here. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> the spicier the chili, the more intense the numbing is. So currently <laughs> the numbing factor is like enclosing my tongue in, ugh, in all that flavor and tingliness. 
way more intense than the mild chili. Whoa. Now I want to try, may as well go on with the chili chocolate. The chocolate is giving you a thicker, creamier, fattier kind of coating. It's less intense for sure. So sugar obviously and sweet things makes the peppercorn and the heat less intense. I think there's one more element here that I'm missing because playing with temperature could be really interesting because desserts can be hot or cold. And what does that do to the Szechuan peppercorn? I don't really know. So I'm gonna try out some ice cream. Green peppercorn. And maybe with some whole fresh peppercorn too. And I reckon a little salt here too. You know how you have that like salty caramel kind of business going on? Let's try that too. Num factor is definitely lower with the ice cream. The sugariness of any of these things definitely pulls the num factor down. The sweeter something is, the less the num factor. If I infuse the Szechuan peppercorn into, say, uh, an oil or a syrup, is that gonna give me the most intense num factor that I can then use to insert into different sweet dishes, whether it's the brownie or the ice cream or a brittle or something like that. So definitely wanna try out that syrup and oil and just see what the num factor is like with those. So at this point, I wanna figure out the best carriers or the options that I have for carriers of that numbing sensation. Infused syrups and then also alcohol, which is a very, very good carrier of flavor actually. So now I'm gonna tackle the infused syrup. I'm gonna do equal amounts of sugar and water. And I just wanna bring that up to a boil so that the sugar dissolves. I'm gonna do a peppercorn and a chili version and try out different ratios for both. Three tablespoons of peppercorns for one batch, six tablespoons for the second batch. For the chili syrup, I'm doing five bird's eye chilies for one batch and then 10 for the second batch. I'm gonna add in some vanilla bean paste for some extra flavor. Now I just top that up with my sugar syrup. My final carrier, which I would say is kind of like a wild card here, is the alcohol. I'm gonna do a vodka and I'm gonna do a tequila. For each of the alcohols, I'm going to try out two teaspoons, four teaspoons and six teaspoons. I'm not gonna heat it or anything like that. Alcohol really takes on flavor very easily. So I think this is all I'm gonna do for today. Give my mouth a break from all this numbing tingliness. Until tomorrow, these things will have time to infuse. Then I can taste them and figure out what direction I wanna move into with my recipes. Okay, so I feel like my taste buds are refreshed. <laughs> they were really starting to get very numb yesterday. Let me try the six tablespoon syrup. Ooh, that's nice. Tasting these, it almost tastes like you've got a bunch of other spices in here. I don't know how that sugar has unlocked a whole sort of like plethora of different flavors and spiced flavors, but it's really lovely. It tastes so complex. Let's try this 10 chili business. I feel like I just made the weirdest face. <laughs> it's really hot. It's, it's, it's very, it's, whew. it's such a weird sensation because the sugar is so sweet, but it's immediately hot. It's not like a slow burn hot. It's um, immediately hot. That is amazing. I love it. It makes me excited. It's getting like juicy things going in my mouth. <laughs> I want to try mixing them together to see what happens. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. Because you are getting all like the numbing, the spicy, but then you've got the added layer of the sweetness as well. You tell oh, me. so this is the lot mixed together. This is the mixed together. Wow. It's wow, right? Wow. Why don't you do an Italian meringue with this? Oh, that's true. That's a good idea. Because mm -hmm. I, I was trying to figure out where to put syrup, but yeah, syrup in Italian meringue is perfect. I knew that you would come out with something good, Jamie. Thank you, oh. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try out these alcohols. So this is the vodka. Ooh. Whoa, there is so much numbing happening right now. Yeah, that's a 10, 12 out of 10 business. Like it's real, my whole mouth is just, just feels like it's, Numb. There's a lot of like sort of bitter peppercorn going on there. I'm not sure it's all together that pleasant. What? What are you gonna do? This like well, a, a shot hey, glass. What am I? Hey, all you. I don't know if I want to do the tequila now. <laughs> so now I think where I need to go is actually testing out some of these things in recipes. So elements of desserts or sweet things that I think could 
come together into one awesome dessert at the end. I definitely want to try out this meringue idea with the sugar and peppercorns. I think Jamie's idea about the Italian meringue is really cool. I definitely think there needs to be a chocolate element. Brownie is, keeps popping into my mind. Definitely a peanut butter. I mean, when I'm thinking salty and pepper and that creamy peanut, it's kind of, you know, or a cookie even. Oh, I can't forget the ice cream because I loved the ice cream, that cold element too. All right, I've got lots of things to test out here. So now I want to try out my Italian meringue. I want to get that Szechuan hot and numbing business going on inside the meringue. So the initial syrups I made had a lot of water, but an Italian meringue needs more sugar, less water, so that the egg cooks and stabilizes properly. I'm gonna put sugar and just a little bit of water into a saucepan and just bring that to a boil. I'm gonna add chilies that I've halved because I think that's gonna extract more of the spicy flavor. I'm gonna to add toasted green peppercorns and also just a little bit of vanilla bean paste. So to really infuse the flavors and get the right consistency, I'm gonna reduce the heat down and then I wanna bring the temperature of that liquid sugar to 115 degrees Celsius. First of all, it's super spicy. I'm getting a lot of that chili spice, which is really great. And sort of now at the end, the numbing is coming through and it actually like builds the more you eat, the more you taste. That's hitting like the number nine factor that I wanted on the numb factor. So I think we can go ahead and use that. And I'm gonna add it to my egg whites while the mixer is running very slowly so that the egg whites cook and get really lovely and fluffy. So let's just have a taste of it on its own, first of all. Yeah, I really like that. I'm getting much more intense Szechuan peppercorn flavor. It's not really spicy, which I think might be a little bit weird. It's actually just a little numbing, maybe like on the scale of 10, about six, which is really great for something sweet. Cause I know this is not gonna be the dessert on its own. So I wanna try it out with some chocolate. This combination is definitely something. It's got the flavor, spice, the numbing, but also that chocolate flavor is giving us a real kind of depth. The brownie keeps popping into my head because I feel like the brownie is gonna give us this rich chocolatiness that I'm getting with this dark chocolate. And then combining with spicy, hot and numbing meringue, I feel like it's starting to come together a little bit. But there's some other bits and pieces I haven't tested yet, which is the peanut aspect. Cookies, I haven't even tried that yet. I also wanna bring in that cold sensation from the ice cream as well. And I'm hoping that once I've tried all those things, then I can really pull out which ones are gonna go into making the ultimate dessert with the, that spicy, exciting, numbing kind of sensation. 10 out of 10 numbing factor, that's what I'm after. So I had an overnight think about today and brownie has been the thing that's popping into my mind a lot. The thing with the brownie is that's heavy on fat, heavy on the, the rich chocolate, and I don't know how much of the numbing and the spicy I can get into the brownie. So that's like my main thing with the brownie today. How spicy, hot and numbing can I get it? Um, so I'm gonna make a standard brownie mix and then kind of divide it up and have a fiddle with those ratios. Now I can divide up the batter and my first batch is going to have three three teaspoons of ground Szechuan peppercorns, the green ones, and also a teaspoon of chili flakes. So it's gonna go into the oven about 25 minutes until it's just set. The brownie texture itself is really good. All right, let's see. I'm tasting some Szechuan peppercorn fragrance. The numb factor is, I think, a little bit too low. Still about like a four, five. I like the chunks of the peppercorn because I feel like I'm getting a little like pop of numbingness when I chew through something, but there's got to be more. All right, so I've decided to go in double for all of my flavorings for the second batch. And I'm gonna do like a little bit of a chili salt sprinkle on the top of the brownie as well. Now this needs to bake 25 minutes. Let's see. Like it's straight away a completely different brownie. Spicy right up front. It's salty right up front. And then now I'm chewing and I'm going through those peppercorns and I'm getting numb factors right up there. The sweetness is still pulling it down a little. I would say this is like an eight, but I feel like if I kept eating, it would really build. I'm, I'm fully committed to this brownie. It, it's really good. So next steps for me, I still want to try out the peanut combo because I love the peanut chili and Szechuan uh, you know, combination. There I want to try out a peanut butter and I also want to try out like a peanut cookie as well. Once I figure those things out, then I can decide what's going to happen at the end. Let's go with, I think, the peanut butter next. Oh, it looks nice and 
creamy. Okay, so what I want to do here is figure out how much of the peppercorns and I think some chili that I want to add in here. I'm going to add the ground toasted Szechuan peppercorns and some chili and salt to see if it brings me back to the, like that beer nuts kind of vibe that I had in that first tasting. Mmm. And it's got that really creamy peanut kind of flavor. I think it needs more of the peppercorn and chili though. I actually think we could do a little bit more sugar here and maybe just a little dash of salt. Mmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, straight away. Bang, spicy, bang, salty, bang, numbness. What else could this work in? This flavor profile could work in a cookie. This could work in like a praline where we add like a, a caramel to it. So I think definitely I, I, I wanna go down this path a little further. Cookies and praline next. I'm gonna put the cookies in the oven and bake them for around about 10 minutes or until they're just kind of lightly golden. For the praline, I'm gonna use the peanuts I already roasted and I'm gonna add in some sliced fresh red chili, some red Szechuan peppercorns, some green peppercorns, and then just a little bit of salt to accentuate all those flavors in there. And then I'm going to heat up some sugar and water to make a toffee, pour that over the top and let it set. I love that crunchy sugar Szechuan peppercorn I did on the outside, that looks so good. That's a good cookie. Delicious, but numb factor is like maybe three or four. I was expecting to get more of that numbing, spicy, tingling factor kind of going on here. Now I'm a bit unsure about this, like, is this going to be the same thing where I'm not getting enough of the, that hot numbing business going on, but I'll just see if I can crack in here first. Oh, okay. So I definitely want to get some of these bits, like with all the chili stuff in there. Oh, wow. No, this is way better. Immediately, I'm getting spicy. Immediately, I'm getting tingling, numbing going on, much more than the cookie, like the, no comparison. I mean, this is like an, this is an eight on the numb factor actually straight away. All right, so the cookie really has um, kind of cemented in my mind which way I want to go with this dessert because I was going to use the cookie kind of like in, in an eaten mess kind of way with the meringue. The cookie doesn't do it for me either. So this praline though, I mean this has this, I need this. I need the praline, definitely the brownie and the meringue, but how do I incorporate the praline? Well, I was thinking like the Bomb Alaska has ice cream, which has that cold element that I wanted to bring in, but what if I put the praline in the ice cream? And that way I'm using all the elements that I love so that my dessert is not just numbing, but it's hot, it's sweet and it's cold as well. All the things. I like it. Bomb Alaska is a cake base. You have a cold ice cream middle. You always have a meringue on the outside covering all of that. And then you need to torch the outside so that you have a slightly warm meringue, cold center, and the cake base as you kind of bite through or scoop through the Bomb Alaska. It's usually on fire though, right? In my mind, I'm thinking about the Bomb Alaskas I've had in restaurants and it's it's on fire. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> just thinking now that we can make that happen because we made alcohol, right? Like we made the vodka. <laughs> I feel like that's just inviting danger. <laughs> what could go wrong? First thing I need to do is blitz up my praline and then mix it through an ice cream so I can get it chilled down into a mold for my Bomb Alaska. I'm going to put the praline into a blender, blitz it till it's nice and fine, and then mix it through a slightly softened vanilla ice cream. I'm really excited about this. Like I look at that and I think, you know, pop rocks, I'm thinking about fun, crunchy textures. Oh, it's delicious. It's textural, there's all this, this popping going on, there's caramel, there's Szechuan pepper flavor. Numbing wise, it's building, like every mouthful I'm getting more. I'm gonna give it about a five, so not super high up on the numbing scale, but I'm gonna let it slide because, I mean, one, it's delicious. Two, I think a lot of my other elements are really numbing. Every single one of the others, super numbing on the eight to 10 scale. So I reckon this paired with the others, it's all going to get there in the end. Now I basically need to mold the ice cream. So I'm going to put it into a bowl lined with some cling film and then pop it into the freezer until it's firm. So for the brownie part, this is like the base, right? So it's got to be able to fit into the same bowl that I have the ice cream in, in the freezer. I need to cut a circle from the brownie that fits inside the bowl. No, now it's not going to come out. Oh no. Can we crack the bowl? 
crack the bowl? Do you know how expensive this bowl is? You ask Jamie if we can crack the bowl. <laughs> no. What do you reckon? This one? It's like a baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Three days of work just like flashed before my eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna get the ice cream. And then I'm gonna put that brownie disc on top of the ice cream in the bowl and put it back in the freezer so it all sets together. So now it's all about timing really, because when the uh, brownie and the ice cream come out and they're nice and firm, I need to have the meringue ready to go so I can plaster that over the top and get everything going. I'm gonna put my egg whites and some lemon juice into my mixing bowl and whisk until stiff peaks. The lemon juice is gonna help to stabilize the meringue. So for my syrup, I'm gonna take the infused syrup that I made yesterday, strain it, and then heat it up to 115 degrees Celsius. And then I'm gonna slowly pour that into my egg white mixture. That's gonna cook the meringue and give me a meringue with a lovely, hot, numbing flavor and sensation. Yum! It's like Szechuan pepper marshmallow. <laughs> it's really good. I'm gonna take the infused vodka, heat it up. Hopefully some of the alcohol will burn off as I'm pouring it onto the dessert. And then I'm gonna be left with that super numbing sensation that I got from the vodka shot when I tasted it. I'm gonna get my brownie and ice cream mold out of the freezer. It's already very exciting. It's not often you make like molded things, I feel like, in real life. <laughs> then I'm going to slather my meringue all over, cover it completely, and then we can light the fire. That looks really great, look at that. I think we've done it. Oh, okay. All right, so I need to brown this off. Oh. <laughs> Why is he doing that? So I really want to torch some of this to get that like golden color. And then we want to do the vodka like, oh. Oh, I am scared. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, go away now. Okay. <laughs> really ultra numbing with a few more little peppercorns on top. Yeah. Okay, so I've never done this before, but I think we need to... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's definitely on fire. Okay, that's also on fire. <laughs> I didn't want to, to... We don't want too many things on fire. Okay. It's on fire. <laughs> oh my goodness. Woohoo! Not only is it like numbing, <laughs> and hot and cold, it's actually on fire. You know what's great about that? I can now smell peppercorns because we've got those peppercorns on top, that hot fire like made the peppercorn smell go all crazy. It's still on fire. That's so fun. Okay, I need to, we need to cut into this and have a look. Can you feel the tension in the room, people? <laughs> it is palpable. Wow, I think it looks amazing. Look at that, you've got all the layers. That, the brownie's a bit frozen. Okay, that's a really big mouthful. I just have to go in sections. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think I actually, I actually did it. This thing is like, it's spicy, it's numbing. It's just kind of like warm and chocolatey and spicy, but then you've got this like kind of cold, hot, numbing business going on with the ice cream and the meringue and the and the whole thing. I mean, I really did not think that you could get like a hot and numbing dessert two days ago, three days ago. Oh my goodness, this is like day three of this dessert. Mm. Yeah, num factor nine. It's so weird because my mouth is literally going all tingling and crazy, but I'm eating something sweet. It's so weird. It's crazy, but it's good crazy. Whoa! Oh no, I'm never this messy. <laughs> I, I set this thing on fire, we had fire. Every time you bake, you make a mess. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> this is a bloody great time. Spicy, mm. oh no, just, my mouth's just getting more and more numb. Of all these elements, I knew it was going to be good, right? But the Szechuan, it's taken it to a whole other place. And the chilli, mm. So I set out to make a hot and numbing dessert that was also delicious. And I think we got there. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished.